Welcome everyone, thanks for coming. My name is Gloria Matera and I'm the former Green Party candidate for Lieutenant Governor in 2010, where the Hawkins Matera ticket placed third out of seven candidates. And in fact, the Green Party is the only truly independent political party that gained ballot status without cross endorsing any other candidates on other party lines. I'm also a lifelong Brooklyn resident a public health worker, a parent of a public school student who is active in the school leadership team. So I know firsthand what it's like to suffer the effects of the lack of funding in health care and education. But I'm much more concerned about my fellow New Yorkers who are losing their jobs, their homes, and their schools. One in five New York City residents live below the poverty line. Unemployment is up, food insecurity and housing insecurity are going up too. But today I'm feeling pretty optimistic and it's not just because it's a spring day. Right now things look a little grim for the New Yorkers because the governor of the 1% basically puts in programs that help the rich and the corporations. But today the excitement is all about the fact that Howie Hawkins is announcing his campaign for governor of New York State. Howie is a former Marine, a teamster who unloads trucks for UPS in the middle of the night. He's also a lifelong activist in the peace, labor, environment, and justice movements. But he's not only a lifelong activist, he's a visionary leader in those movements. His Green New Deal agenda will lift up all New Yorkers, not just the rich and the corporations. So I am honored to introduce my former running mate, the next governor of New York State, Howie Hawkins. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Howie. Thank you, Gloria. New York needs a Green New Deal, and that is the core of the platform we're running on. Green New Deal, I'll give you six basic points. The first is everybody ought to have the right to a job at a living wage. That means if you can't get a job in the private sector, you go to the employment office, not the unemployment office, and say, I want my job. And we put you to work doing public works and infrastructure or public services defined by the community. So full employment's the first point. Second is living wages. If you work full time, you should be able to pay your bills. That means at least $15 an hour across New York State. That sounds like, well, it's double the federal minimum wage. But in 1963, we asked for $2 at the March on Washington for jobs and freedom. So we're back where we were back then, and it's time to move forward in history and provide that living wage. And in New York City, they ought to have the right to even set a higher wage. Living costs are higher here. So there ought to be home rule on setting minimum wage within municipalities. Third point is health care. Health care should not be a commodity for sale. It should be a human right. And what we're talking about is a publicly funded single-payer health care system providing all medically necessary services to everybody. Everybody in, nobody out. When you go to the doctor, you give them your card, he swipes it or she swipes it, they will get paid by the single payer and you will get just health care. No co-pays, no deductibles. And actually that will save us all money. So single payer health care is point number three. Point number four, and we're in front of the Board of Education here in New York City, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this after you give them the basic thing, but we stand for lifelong, fully funded, quality public education from early childhood through college. And then, Fifth is affordable housing and transit. The state needs to put money into the public housing down here. They're three years behind on repairs. The feds have abandoned us. And then secondly, Governor Cuomo should not be trading the tra rating the transit fund to balance the state budget. He took $30 million out in this budget, and that's just wrong. Transit is part of what we call the Green New Deal because the sixth point is we want to have 100% clean energy by 2030 in this state and committing to that and building out, it's a third industrial revolution. We go from server mechanical to digital smart grid. We have distributed energy, energy generation from solar and wind. Every house, every vehicle is a power plant instead of these centralized fossil fuel based plants. Building out that system is a public full employment program, four and a half million jobs. People will be moving to New York to get those jobs. So that's the Green New Deal. They're basic economic human rights. They're the same things 
that Franklin Roosevelt said we ought to have when he called for a second Economic Bill of Rights in the State of the Union Address in 1944. It's the same demands that the Civil Rights Movement called for when they marched on Washington in 63, knowing once they got the rights and for freedom, they should have the economic means to enjoy it. And after that came a freedom budget for the federal government that was never fulfilled. It's time to fulfill it. The Democrats and Republicans have been in charge that 70 years. They have not done it. And so 21 percent, one in five people in New York are poor. In my home city of Syracuse, two in five, almost 40 percent people are poor. So the, the major parties aren't getting it done. It's time for us to get it done. Now, we're here in front of the Edu Board of Education because it's time for less testing and more teaching. It's time to opt out of the corporate educational reform agenda. We know what the root causes of poor performance in schools are. It's poverty concentrated by segregation and underfunding in disadvantaged schools. We know from the UCLA Civil Rights Project out about two weeks ago now that New York has the most segregated schools in the United States. Worse than Mississippi now, and it's getting worse. Our distribution of funding is the seventh worst in the states according to the Rutgers Education Law Center. That's why our disadvantaged communities are having such a hard time, even though overall we spend a higher proportion of the state budget, or we have a higher level of state funding for schools in most states. But the total funding by our state is at a 65-year low. So as a result, nationwide, this is another demand of the March on Washington, desegregated quality education. Well, at that time, black students, the majority went to uh, 76 percent of black students went to majority black schools. Today it's 74 percent. So that's another issue on which we've not made progress. Now Andrew Cuomo's high-stakes testing regime is designed to fail these disadvantaged schools. Their students, their teachers, and the schools themselves in order to privatize them into charters. And what that's really about is not educating these children that are disadvantaged, it's about punishing them just because they're poor. This has got to stop. It's time to opt out of high-stakes testing the Common Core, which was written by the Pearson Corporation, and the whole race to the top agenda where you have competitive grants and opt back into fully funded schools, desegregated schools, schools where teachers, not outside corporate contractors, write the tests, write the common standards. We do need standards, but tests should be used for diagnostic purposes, not high stakes designed to fail. And we need to have the teachers do that because they're there to educate the children. And we got to stop these high stakes testing designed to close and fire teachers. Beyond that, we need community control of our schools. This corporate agenda also brings with it mayoral control. And beyond that, they're threatening to take over uh, school districts upstate with state control. And we need to get back to elected school districts. Democracy may be time consuming and messy, but us working people get a say. Corporate privatization with mayoral control or state control means the corporations are running the shots and we're cut out altogether. And finally, we're talking about lifelong public education. Lifelong means universal pre-K and kindergarten. I'm glad down here in the city you're going to universal pre-K. We don't have kindergarten in a lot of places upstate. And we didn't get enough funding in this last budget to even begin either kindergarten or universal pre-K. So more money needs to be devoted in the state budget out of that. And then for lifelong higher education, SUNY, CUNY, and community colleges should be tuition free. It would just cost one and a half billion out of a $138 billion budget. There's a bill in the state assembly. Let's get on with it. We had CUNY free from 1848 to 1975. And that's something if we're a richer society than we were in 1975, we should get back to that. Now this place is also called Tweed Courthouse. That's after Boss Tweed. Now Boss Tweed used to say, you can vote for anybody you want to as long as I get to pick the candidates. And you know what? We're going from a machine run by Boss Tweed to a two-party machine run by Wall Street. And I'm running against a man, we call him Governor 1%, Andrew Cuomo, who less than 1% of his 4,273 contributors, which is a small group to begin with, gave less than $1,000. Now, working class people can't give $1,000. So, you know, maybe he's got a few bamboozled working class people. 733 people gave $10,000 or more. 242 people gave $40,000 or more. Now those people that gave $10,000 or more, that's 81% of all his money. Those that gave $40,000 or more is 45% of his money. In other words, a few hundred people have given Andrew Cuomo $33 million and said, you know what to do. 
Well, we know what we need to do in response. We need a system of full public campaign financing, not partial, not matching funds, but when you qualify with a, a reasonable number of $5 contributions into the public fund, you get a grant. You can reach all your voters, and you run only on that clean money. If you don't opt in, you can run on the dirty money, but at least the voters will know who's dirty and who's clean. And this is a system they've got in Arizona, they got it in Maine, and I think New York is more progressive than those states. It's time to get that done. Uh, I think also we need to note that Governor Cuomo shut down the Moreland Commission, which he set up presumably because he didn't get public campaign finance in the first place. And now that he's got a token program, just doing it for the comptroller for one year, and then it's over, uh, he thinks he can shut down the Moreland Commission. So we, get, we lose more people from our state legislature by being perp walked and being unelected in an election. We need something like the Moreland Commission. I commend Pre Ferrara, the U.S. Attorney, for continuing the investigation because we got to get the corruption out of New York. And finally, the last point I'd like to make is about this year's state budget. It continues Andrew Cuomo's record of being a right wing, trickle down economic policy guy. It's hard to tell the difference between him and the Republicans. The Democrats seem to want to shut down the New Deal, repeal the New Deal. Now they're all just new Democrats, corporate new Democrats. Of course, the Republicans are worse. They want to repeal the Enlightenment. They don't care what the facts are about climate change, evolution, or even whether the state population is growing or not. Rob Astorino says high taxes are pushing people out of the state. Then why did 75,000 more people come to New York State last year, according to the U.S. Census? So we want to deal with reality. And this budget, they cut the bank tax. They cut estate taxes for the rich that have over $5 million to pass along. They got tax-free zones for manufacturers. And you know who's going to pay up the difference? It's us working people. So that's why we're out here. We want a Green New Deal. We want fair taxes. We want the rich to pay what they did back in the 1970s. And if I could go on, I would tell you how that would generate $30 billion more dollars to fully fund universal pre-K, kindergarten, our schools, our public colleges, to put money into the housing and the transit, and to fund the Green New Deal, particularly the clean energy we need to get to for climate safety and a clean environment. So that's what we're running for, and that's why we're out here in front of the Board of Education, and I'm ready to take any questions. Last time you got about 60,000 votes. What do you say to people who say, why should I invest my vote in somebody who's not likely going to win the election? Because we're going to change the whole political discussion in New York. I believe within our reach is four times what we got last night, 250,000 votes, 5%. That would be as good as any independent left third party has done in New York history. And then the media and the public would say when they want to talk to the left, they'd be talking to the Green Party, the independent left not the left wing of the Democratic Party. And that would change the conversation because the things we're talking about, the Democrats don't talk about anymore. They don't talk about the right to a job. They won't talk about a single payer health care system where you have the right to health care. And when it comes to funding schools, they go along with this whole uh, conservative trickle down economic agenda where if you give money to the rich, supposedly we're going to get jobs and our wages are going to go up. We've been doing that for almost half a century. It's not working. So that's why people should vote for us. Uh, get us into the discussion and we'll change the whole dynamic in New York State. Plus, when we get our ballot line back, we will elect more mayors, town councilors, city councilors, and school board people as we already have in New York State with the ballot line we've had for the last four years.